Hi guys, so in today's Scrap Your Stash, I am using some new items, but you can definitely, you know, do this with what might be in your stash. So this essentially is part of my stash now, isn't it? So here we go. Um, I'm going to try out the Spellbinders Ojo Full Day Scrapbooking Kit. Super cute. We already did a project with the um, card making kit. I did pair it with the Meadow Collection Papers because I think they go really, really well. So I've, this is something I had in my stash, so I brought it out for the card uh, video, but I'll probably use some of this today too. Um, but we're going to try out the scrapbooking kit again. These things are all available a la carte also, so like each individually, like if you want this separate or this separate or the 6x6 paper or the 12x12 paper or however, right? But today I do have the whole scrapbooking kit that Spellbinders did send free of charge from my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you are purchased items through those links. So thank you for using those if you would like. Again, they're in the description box just under here, under the video title. So, what I want to do is something that is going to use a lot of paper. Um, because, you know, if you have tons of paper, you want to use it up. Those kinds of things. So it's going to be a page that has, like, um, a flap, basically. And you can, you know, in the past, obviously, people make flaps out of all kinds of things. But you can buy flaps. Um plastic flaps that help you do this but what I'm going to do is make it so that it can slide into one of your page protectors like if you put this in your scrapbook of course and then the flap itself will come through the plastic of the page protector I don't know if I'm going to show that part as far as cutting it but all you do is cut a slit into it and let the flap come out but we're going to do um, the base page itself um, and I'm not going to put too much because I don't want my pages to be super thick but at the same time it's just a fun way of adding just a little something more interactive right so these papers are absolutely gorgeous um, we already went through and saw every single one in the smaller 6x6 pack. And so this is the larger 12 inch paper. It is single sided. Um, it does have, um, it says 20 sheets, 20 designs. So I suppose that means it's one of each, huh? I would suppose so, because it's 20 and 20, right? Um, in the smaller, the 6-inch paper, you get two of each sheet, of course. So with this kind of thing, I would recommend picking up two. So you have one for left and one for right of your pages. I like double layouts. But, you know, the papers coordinate, so however you want to use that. I mean, they're just gorgeous. We've already seen the prints and the other... I mean, look at this, you guys. Oh, my goodness. They're so cute. The little snow globes with all the little characters in there. Little house, little card delivering gifts. What I'm going to use is something like this for my background just a more background type of paper maybe I'll use some Excuse of the other ones my from goodness <laughs> so yeah I just want something kind of plain for the background and then the more decorative papers I'll probably use them like more of the focal point kind of papers we'll see but I mean so cute the little candy canes and so we already went through this I'll uh, link that video in the description box because I go through each and every page and give you a really good look at them but this is just larger and the perspective is a little bit larger on these obviously like this one with the uh, five color blocks um, strips just sm smaller in the six by six but look at this it's like ledger paper with all the little characters from like the nutcracker I mean so cute so we're just gonna jump right into it as far as that um, beautiful papers I will do a little bit of an unboxing for these guys though because I didn't really do it last time so I did show you guys the frames because it's easy to grab these and just show you it has all these cute frames that's the section that pops out from the center there I mean, there's just lots of cuteness here. Fun ways to use these on scrapbooking pages. There's snow globes. Oh my goodness. And little, like, um, like slides, right? Okay, and then we have the Jet Puff stickers. You have these kind of that just kind of pop here and there, which I love. Um, on the back it has more of the foiling with, like, little tickets and all these cute little things. Right, and it says two sheets. So it's, this is one sheet, there's two sheets, and it feels pretty thick, not just because of this piece of uh, paper in the center, but like they're gonna be nice uh, thickness of stickers. And then the uh, die cuts, that's right, I just kind of showed it here, and I'll probably still just show it here until it's time to actually use them. So I haven't really thought too much of this other than I want to make <laughs> something that has like that flap. So let me move these things to the side, and let's see. I'm just putting these to the side and I don't want them to slide around. Okay, like I said, I want a sheet that's going to be in the background that doesn't have to be like the most... Hey, look at me. So I, I really like that. That's very pretty. And then we're going to want another piece 
two pieces of cardstock that are basically going to lay on one on top of the other and then you're going to decorate them. But the way I'm going to do this is probably, you know, this is eight and a half inches, so it could be an eight and a half inch square just to make it easy because it's already eight and a half inches. So we might do that. And then our flap will be eight and a half inch on top of eight and a half inch. Why not? So let me see the papers that are in here that will be cute. And you can make flaps, one coming in from the left, one coming in from the right, top and bottom, or however, I mean, just so many ways. Um, again, I think this is what they consider the coral color in this pack. I'm really liking this pink, especially because I feel like it goes real well with this. Um, I do have another little piece here, but I do need two of these, right? That one. Ooh, a brown might be nice. A little light blue. Let's see. <gasps> so cute. Um... Those are very different. I was thinking about using the red or the coral color. Maybe that's what it'll do. Oh, and I already cut into this one. I wonder if I can get eight and a half inches off of this other side. Oh, it's like eight inches the way I cut this into here. So, okay, fine. I'll use this one. Okay, so let's use these two. And basically, I'm making them the same size so that one lays over the other. But, yeah, well, you know what? Maybe we can make it more framed out. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Sorry guys, I'm telling you, I just come up with these things as we're going along, and I just changed my mind. So now I can use this one a little bit smaller, and let me go turn off my dryer, I'll be right back. So, I'm just coming up with numbers as we go along, and hopefully this will look nice. So I'm thinking if we do this one, eight and a half inch, just so it's easy to cut. Down to eight and a half. So the 11 inch side, actually I'm not going to swing that arm out, let's just cut off the excess here. So since we're going to cut two and a half inches off and that should leave it eight and a half inches on the this other side here. This is A2 size paper, right? If I did that right, let's make sure. Yep, eight and a half. All right, we have that guy. And then I'm going to take this piece and maybe make it six inch is that too small yeah and six inch would be fine let's do six and a half I know that's a random number it's just because um, the half inch I don't know I feel like I want it to be exactly an inch smaller all around so let's go six and a half inch square And then we also need another piece that's going to essentially go behind this um, to cover it up so it looks nice. So you can either use the same color again, maybe a, a different you know, accent color, maybe we use some of our pattern paper. So let me think about that right quick. And this will all start making sense in just a moment. Okay, you know, I'm going to take this guy. Why not? Six and a half inch square. We need two of these. So if you want to conserve this, you could definitely make this into a six inch square. That way you have more six inch squares, right? You just cut it in half. I'm going to cut this at a funky six and a half inches, but do whatever you like. Um, that makes sense for you. So basically I'm going to take five and a half on one side because that'll leave me six and a half on the other. So if you do want to conserve paper, I would say make this little square in here six inches. Um, it'll just make it nicer for you. Um, and then this side, also five and a half. And that should leave me the square that I would want here. Thank goodness, yes, okay. I'm going to put this one on top, and then this one's going to be underneath. We need to sandwich it because you're going to make a flap, right? And you want this up and down. You don't want to just see the back of this with like a hinge. So before we really get going on that, we're going to need a couple things. So this is six and a half inches. I do have some paper left here. If you want it to be the exact same color, that's fine. You're going to want something that is basically the same width, or just about. So six and a half inches is perfect to make a little hinge for us, okay? And I only want like maybe half inch glue tabs, so I just need a six and a half inch by one inch. And you can take another scrap of paper if you don't want to use your nice papers like this. And I'm going to score this at half an inch. So on here, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's not going to be showing anyway. But you do want that scored at half an inch. That's going to make our little hinge for us. So you really want this scored up really nice and crisp. And just a couple other things before we move on from this piece. I'm going to divot this out so that it sits in really nicely. So I'm going to take that out. 
corner to corner. Or not corner to corner, but corner, and then divot it in a little bit like that. Okay. And we also need to make a slit in this one that's going to hold this guy so you don't really see it. So, this is six and a half inches, this is eight and a half inches. So, you're going to start off um, by going one inch in. So, line this up at one inch. Line up your actual cutting tool at r roughly one inch, right? So, one inch in, one inch right here, and then bring it all the way down, leaving an inch at the bottom not cut. So, that means you're going to start at one inch, and you're going to stop at seven and a half. Okay. And you're just going to have a little slit like that. So, <laughs> let's do a couple things before we get this all stuck down. I am going to stick this right on here. If you want to conserve your paper and gut this and take like a piece of the center out, go ahead. I just feel like it really needs the sturdiness from the whole sheet of paper for this to work really well. So, that's why I'm not going to do that. But, what we're going to do is take this guy and glue it in between two flaps. These guys. And you can definitely, you know, corner around, do cute things, whatever, if you want. I just have my paces, my paces? My pieces cut, I was going to say papers and pieces, I guess. Um, so there we go. So hopefully I haven't lost you guys yet. And then on this side, I'm going to put a little bit of glue because I do want to get this going. Now, this is going to tuck in here, so we need <laughs> this part of the glue flap down here. Okay, so leave it so that it's sticking out the top. And since I already scored it, I do want it facing backwards. Like, that's the piece that's going to be in there. Okay, we can just leave it flat for now. And we are going to flap this up like this. So if you have a pattern, you definitely want that pattern to know, like, be facing the right way when you pick it up. And this guy. So go right on top of that one. And I'm going to hold that down, just so it makes it nice, comes together nicely, okay? I'm just going to keep smoothing that, and I'll be right back. Okay. Now these pieces, you can either go ahead and slide this in here and glue it down, and then glue the whole thing down, or just glue the this top square down where you want it to be, you know, however it is. Um, I think, should we do all at once? I kind of was thinking about just doing this and then sliding this in with a little glue behind it, but that might be messier. So let's go ahead and slide this in here and basically turn this over. Okay. And this can actually glue like that. It doesn't have to glue bent, but I already scored it the way I did and kind of, if you want to glue it this way, just make sure <laughs> that this guy will fold upwards. But I kind of made it so that this needs to be held down back here, so that's okay. It's going to take some holding. So since on this side when you turn it over, you have this little flap, right? So let's just give it some training and make sure everything's okay. It's exactly the same size, so, you know, I'm just looking at the... There we go. Looks good. Now, we're going to glue this down, right? And we want to glue it down in a way that is about an inch and a half from the top, from all around, basically, because um, it's essentially... Oh, uh, is it an inch and a half? Let me think. Uh, if this is eight and a half and this is 12. Yeah, so we have three and a half. Ooh, one and three quarters, right? Let me make sure my math is right in my head. Yep, that's right. Oh, bummer, I can't really put this on here. One and three quarters. So I have this lined up on a line that I know is a full. So here, like one inch, one and a half, one and three quarters, right here. And try to keep it nicely lined up. And that's straight right there, because I don't want this to be super crooked, so we are going to pay attention to that. And if there's anything else that you want to stick down under here, like if you have little flourishes or something cute you want to come out from behind, um, you know, this guy, definitely think about that and get those stuck down first because we are going to glue this guy down. So, um, again, you can make the panels so they're exactly the same. It could have been eight and a half on top of eight and a half. I just did something a little different. Let's get glue all over that. 
and we are going to pay attention left and right and actually I can look at my ruler here one and a half one and three quarters and put it right by the ten and three quarter line and that should be pretty much center right right there right here let me pull it up a little bit more this way okay well because I do want that nice and straight all right I'm gonna hold this down and I'll be right back so I line this up at one and three quarters here and this is already set up at one and three quarters from the top right okay I'll be back okay, so that is the like skeleton the bones of what we're doing here so you can imagine this will be decorated this will be decorated and this area will be decorated and add a few things out here so it's gonna be really fun i did grab this um you know i've been using the emerald cut and i love the emerald cut uh, layering dies but i think today i'm gonna use this one which is the happy hour ones and i think you know why not right really nice and big or we can go to this other size one Gonna make it a little bit smaller maybe for this one we'll use this guy I'll run that through a coordinating color um, the next die you know I would just take the size of this which I'm assuming is the whole four and a quarter by five and a half like an a2 size that's what it looks like yeah so if I was cutting down my my image I would cut it down to matte layer into a four and a quarter by five and a half I don't know if I would cut it with this one I mean you can it's gonna put these little marks in it which aren't bad it's cute and you can definitely run this through you know your paper and then this one through the photo so you have it cropped down um but i think we'll i'm not gonna put photos in it today to be honest because i generally don't but um just something to think about so i think oh hello i'm gonna use both of these on this one let's bring some of that red or that coral out so i'm probably gonna run this through here maybe in this direction but you know it's definitely going to cut four and a quarter by five and a half on that. Um, what I'm trying to say is I'm not going to cut this to four and a quarter by five and a half and then put this on top because it's going to cut that for me and I don't want it to move a little bit and then it's off and then, you know, you're going to give yourself some room. So um, generally I give myself a little bit of room. So it does cut into your paper in a way that's going to leave it less um, able to use four and a quarter by five and a half later. Uh, okay, so we have that one, and then this one, again, I'll use it here, and I'll use it here, too. So, I'm just going to run through some cute colors, maybe through some pattern paper on this one, just to do something different. And I'll so be right back. Pick some different papers for my matte layers. And again, if there's something you want to tuck behind the matte layer, you want to put that down, for sure, as you're building this up. Let me see how I'm going to do this. So that one there. And I was thinking about putting one of the little frames here on this outside one. And, I mean, it could be any of these guys, right? However, something like that. Maybe a little circle. That's cute. The snow globe one. Oh, my gosh. Um, I do like the way the list looks, but we have this one. Oh, let's go with this one. Now, you can definitely measure that. But what I would do is, if you have a photo that you want to do this with, I would put this on top of wherever it is on that picture and then just trace it with like an Expo or dry erase marker because this is the piece that fell out of here. And then you can always wipe away the dry erase or just a, a marker marker because what's going to happen is it's going to give you a little bit of a lip because as you're using a felt marker or whatever, it's not going to be right so close to it that it's going to be visible. So you cut that, right? You're tracing it. You cut it out. And that's going to give you a little bit of lip that can go behind this right um which is something to think about or you can just pop it right in there so i'm gonna have that i think that'll be there let's see we have all these other items in this particular kit let me clean up just a little bit so we can start putting some things together okay so i put some things away and then we have this i mean we can have cute things out here so let me open this guy up i want to see if that was like a way to open it, but now we're basically going to open it from the top here. And I thought there's like little ribbons. I'm going to put this, whatever's in here, out. I saw that there were like little pieces like this, cute stuff like that. But I'm looking for a specific one. <laughs> do, do, do. Lots of love, joy, and peace today, tomorrow, and always. Very cute. Oh, traditions. Maybe we put that there. We have Merry Christmas, greetings, Christmas, Merry Christmas traditions, right? We can do that. 
cute. So for me on that one would be obviously decorating the tree, baking cookies, that kind of thing. Um, that is something we do every time making tamales. That would be for my mom, this little guy. Something cute like that. Right? And of course you can add all kinds of things. I'm just showing you a little something. So I'm going to glue this one down. The frame, I'm probably going to stick down in a way that's not really stuck down, but it's stuck down enough for you guys to see that. So um, I'm going to glue this. Again, if you want to gut behind that, you could have done that. So always planning, thinking a little bit ahead. Cute, but I want that over there. And I mean, you can layer up a couple of them. I don't know what else we have in here. I'm going to put that there. That's very cute. And there's a lot of pretty stuff in here. Well, I'm going to put the other thing there, so I don't know, but I'm trying to see if there's any way to layer some up so it's peeking out behind. But a lot of these are mostly tags and things like that. I mean, this could even be where you do your journaling, right? Very cute. So let me glue this down. Again, I'm gluing it down flat because that's how I want my pages for the most part. Pretty flat. Okay, Christmas, and then traditions can kind of bridge those frames to kind of make it look cute like that. Okay, and like I said, this one I'm going to do is put some, just a little bit of double-sided tape, just so it'll hold on now, but I can remove it and actually put my pictures in later. So let me do that, just put a little bit and take the backing off. Okay, the smallest amount of tape there so I can remove it later. Um, hmm, maybe up and down like that. I don't know. So I put a little image in there. And then we can decorate this back side. I cut this one out for this, basically, and this one for this. So I'm just going to glue that down. Unless there's something you want to stick behind it, peeking out, you can definitely pop that on. I'm just going to put this back here, and that's another picture with some other cute stuff. You know, if you want to fill it in. Happy holidays. What else do we have in here? I'm making a mess of this. <laughs> uh, let's just say we have like Merry and Bright right there. Cute. What is this one? Warm Wishes. You know, that can go like down here if we wanted. Maybe we're going to use this one up here. I'm going to leave a little area. Oop, that's not the area I wanted. I'm going to leave a little area without being glued because I want to slide my images in there. So I'm going to be like this. Okay. And I left that without being stuck down that <laughs> edge there. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, we have cute stickers over here too. Adorable stuff. Yeah, just filling it in. So maybe I'll take this and... Really cute, these borders. I mean, you can definitely put them on the sides. I would do that after my pictures are in. Merry and bright, joyous, believe, magical. Like I said, these are nice thick stickers. And yeah, put that one there. Okay, just a little something else. And then down here, I mean, these things can all be sticking out so you can see it from behind um, or, or however you want to stick them down. So let's get this one here. And so I hope that gives you an idea of how to make one of these guys with a little bit of a flap and it's going to be a little more interactive. Very cute. Gosh, you know what? I think I'm going to go with something else instead of the... Something like this. Oh, the Christmas list. That is so cute. Yeah, so maybe this is a tree decorating one, you know. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's see, hold on. There's something stuck on there, sorry. Cute. Okay, I like the way that looks, but maybe I'll put a little twine on that one. Let me grab some twine from my stash. Actually, I have a piece right here. Just to give a little more oomph to that, maybe some black and white twine. And so, you know, whatever you have in your stash, you have your... Um, Actually, I'll do it this way so it's a little bit flatter and doesn't mess with the picture up there too much. Um, 
the part of scrapbooking is always finding the embellishments that go along with your paper and stuff like that. That's usually a little trickier, right? So it's nice to have a kit. But you can put all these things together. And I probably will write some things on that little list. That would be so cute because, you know, the kids always will. Until they got to be a certain age, <laughs> they're going to be writing up. How cute is that if it was sticking out a little bit more like that behind there? Um, actually, that works because then that way it doesn't interfere with this picture up here. Or like the little lump here doesn't mess that up. Um, I, I still have their Christmas lists. <laughs> I mean, they're off at Santa's workshop. <laughs> they are there. I asked for them to be returned to me. There you go. Uh, really cute. So anyway, keep filling it out. But hopefully I give you an idea of how to make some like this. Let me clean up just a little. Oh my goodness. Look at this one. Anyhow, that's what those little dots are. I'm like, where's that little dot? It's just what came off of there. Um, oh, I love it. Loving the figgy pudding. I'm going to pop that on there. Just in a way that helps me that I can still write right there. Okay, let me clean up a little bit and we'll take another look. Hey guys, so I was just looking at this and I left it pretty plain in some areas and I was like, oh, the joy would be really cute right here. I mean, it echoes that, but maybe it echoes that too much. <laughs> so anyway, how about fa -la -la -la? Cute, some other little words. I mean, you can do so much. Um, you know what, let me take Holly Jolly. And just pop it right here. Cute. Okay, so we have our 12 inch paper, right? This was 12 inches. This one is eight and a half inch square and this one's six and a half inch square. And then we did some matte layers, right? Coating them out with some uh, dyes. So you put your little pictures in here and they're gonna look really fun and cute. When you put this into your sleeve, what I would do is put the whole thing in the sleeve, right? Whole thing, just let, let it slide in there. And I would t carefully take an X-Acto knife or whatever knife and just cut a little slit into the plastic. I'm telling you that plastic is so thin it cuts very easily so I would just see where it's at and just slide along and cut it. If that scares you, um, see kind of where you want to put it. Maybe even make a line with a, with a um, expo like a dry erase marker right have it in there put a line on your plastic take this out and then just pop in like um, you know I have tons of those kinds of things like a little cutting mat. Of course I say I have tons of them and I you know what I'm saying? Just a smaller cutting mat you can pop in there and um, cut into it. Oh, or, oh even um, this kind of thing because it doesn't hurt it. You know, you just go in there and pop it into your plastic and then cut over the top. Maybe with a ruler if you think it has to be that exact. But basically the opening has to be at least six and a half inches, maybe even seven. You can give yourself a little extra, you know. And then all you do is slide it back out a little bit. <laughs> enough to where this flap can then come out through the little hole and then slide it back down in and I promise you it'll work <laughs> so um, it just works you know then the slits there this is gonna be out on the outside and people can interact with it and the rest of it is behind the plastic all right guys I hope that makes sense <laughs> thanks for watching um, I will have images coming up I'll have the links in the description box and I will see you all at the next one bye now